Alright, so in this video, I'm going to show you how this guy went from this to this in literally a few weeks. So I do online coaching for skaters where I help them lock in different habits related to training, nutrition, recovery, mindset and other lifestyle related things that are going to enhance how they skate and how they feel on and off their boards. And one of the other things that's included in this coaching program is also breaking down and analyzing their clips. If they're stuck on a trick, they'll send me a clip and I'll break it down, I'll compare it to the pros, I'll see what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong and how they can improve it and send them back like a full detailed video analysis of what I think with some tips for them for them to go away and actually work on to improve that trick. So now I'm going to play this clip breakdown that took this guy from struggling to hard flip on flat to doing them down gaps in a few weeks. Hopefully you'll find it useful and you'll get some ideas of how you can start to analyze your own clips as well. So play the clip. So I just wanted to start off by playing your clip and getting you to pay attention to the sound of your pop, all right? You hear that? It was like a proper scoopy sounding pop, whereas if we play this clip here, unfortunately it's gonna have some music playing, but if you pay attention, you should be able to hear like a single sound like snappy pop. If we compare this to the boss hard flip master, Brian Herman, you should see like visually the difference in the pop as well. So if we play yours again up here, you can see it takes you a really long time to actually pop the board. Like your foot is in contact with the board for quite a while. Like you're scooping it forwards. It's only like now that it leaves. So you're literally pushing forwards. You're pushing the board forwards to get it to do that hard flip motion. Whereas if we look at Herman, you can see that the way he pops is completely different. It's just like a single push down, essentially. Like a single snap, like, boom. One tap, there's no forwards motion. It's like a little jab, like his foot's a little angry cat that's trying to like jab someone. It's like a little Dah. So you can really see that difference, right? Like one quick little jab, and yours is a slower scooping motion. There's also one other thing that I want to point out regarding the front foot, and that's how long your foot and how much foot is in contact with the board. It's almost as if that foot is restricting the board from doing what it needs to do. Whereas if you look at Herman, his front foot doesn't restrict the board in any way. There's that really fast pop, and the foot, it comes in contact with the board to get it to flick, to get it to flip over, but it doesn't restrict it. You see that? The board doing its motion, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up, and there's no change applied to the board from that front foot. It doesn't get in the way at all, doesn't restrict it, it just like lightly taps it, just to cause it to flip around. Whereas with yours, it's almost as if like the front foot is kind of stopping the board and like restricting the board. As well, if it is doing that, that front foot is also gonna be slowing down how fast you can snap. Because if you imagine you apply like a lot of force to like snap the board vertically up and all of that power is causing the board to go up, it's causing it to go up, it's causing it to flick. But if you imagine that front foot staying in contact, it's gonna inhibit it, right? It's gonna slow it down, it's gonna stop it from doing its thing. And I feel like that is happening a little bit with your front foot. It's just kind of like keeping the board down almost and that, that pop is therefore having to like overcome the resistance of that front foot. And I think like both of these things, the pop and that front foot are coming from weight distribution. So if we look at like the way that you're bent down here. All right, I just wanna quickly interrupt the video just to say that if you're liking it and if you wanna help support me and the channel, then some things you can do are just liking the video, subscribing and sharing it with your friends and family as well. This is massive for getting the YouTube algorithm to boost the video and to help the channel grow. So if you're liking it, if you wanna support me, That'll be massively appreciated. All right, back to the video. And I think like both of these things, the pop and that front foot are coming from weight distribution. So if we look at like the way that you're bent down here and compare it to Herman, his weight is more or less, I would say, distributed there. Whereas you're like way over that front foot. You're like way over there, putting a lot of pressure on the front of the board. And I feel like that's doing a couple of things. It's making it really hard for you to pop well because you're unable to get tension in that back foot and put a lot of weight in that back foot to get that fast snap. If we look at like when Herman goes to pop now as well, he's got a lot of weight shifted to that back foot. He's, his weight distribution now is probably more around there, more to the back of the board. You do shift to the back, but you're still leaning more, I would say, over the front foot. And if we compare to old mate, you can see really well like how much he centered over that back foot. He's way on that back foot, all of the weight on the back foot. 
And I think that's allowing him to put a lot of tension into that back foot to really get that fast, snappy pop. So I reckon the best thing you could try and do is try and like play around with having your weight a bit more on the back of the board and a bit more tension on the back of the board. And I feel like that should as well naturally resolve the front foot, restricting the board a little bit. So yeah, try that out, play around with your weight on the back of the board a little bit more, getting that fast snap. And yeah, fingers crossed that we don't even need to pay attention to the front foot. So give that a go. Let me know how it goes and I hope that was useful. So it took just one little technique change for this guy to go from struggling with hard flips on flat to doing them down gaps in just a few weeks. And this just goes to show how important like breaking your clips down and like actually filming yourself and analyzing them can be. Pretty much every sport does this kind of video analysis, but I feel like skating, we don't really do it much. Like, yeah, we watch our clips back, but we're like, oh yeah, that was sick, I'm hyped on my, on my clip. But we never really like film and analyze our technique to then see how we can do it better. And one other super, super important part of this as well is comparing yourself with pros because these guys have these techniques locked in so well. They know how to do the trick. And if you can kind of look for similarities and differences in your attempts and these guys' attempts, it's gonna help you just like unlock what you actually need to do to improve your different tricks. Now, of course, yeah, you could just go out and skate and figure out all this stuff. And the majority of the things you're gonna figure out when it comes down to skating will come from you just getting out there and actually skating. But for those situations where you're like blocked and stuck on how to improve on these different tricks, I feel like this kind of video analysis can be super, super important. So get out there, film your tricks, break them down, and I think you're gonna find it super, super useful. And if you don't really know how to break tricks down or if you want my help with not only trick breakdowns, but also the other things that I do with coaching, nutrition, training, recovery, all this other stuff that's gonna help you skate and feel better on your board, then I'll put a link down in the description below for coaching as well. And that's it for this video, so I hope you like it. If you've got any comments about anything, if you've got other techniques that you use to learn tricks, let us know down in the description below. I'm sure other people are gonna find it useful as well. So there we go, that's it for this one. Peace.